In my academic advising role, I use knowledge developed from my discipline in healthcare. The neighbour model was developed to support communication between doctors and patients, and in particular shared decision making. The model has five checkpoints, connecting, summarising, handing over, safety netting and housekeeping. In my academic advising role, I predominantly support postgraduate students who are studying at a distance. And in this short resource, I'm going to explain to you how I use each one of those checkpoints on the neighbour model to support my role when working with students. The first point of the model is connecting or rapport building. An important opportunity to outline the academic advisor role is at induction or the first point of contact. The remit of this role can be revisited at subsequent meetings. For online students, contact points require anticipation. For example, there is not a set induction session or day. Personally, I try and incorporate the use of technology, such as Skype, at the outset to make the first connection. A real-time interaction provides an opportunity to pick up on verbal and non-verbal cues and explore fears and expectations at the outset of a programme of study and discuss how the academic advising role can be facilitative and how an individual programme of study may be best planned. It's also a good opportunity to discuss individual needs such as language support, disability and study skills and importantly to negotiate access to future real-time contact points I personally offer a, a blend of Skype, office hours and Google chat and email as follow-up contact points. I always back up the first connection with some written information and web links such as guides to PIP, the library, Moodle and use of university IT systems. The next point on the model is summarising and that really is about listening and elicitation skills. You will note the advice given by the university about listening skills draws on theory from coaching. This fits very well with the second checkpoint of the neighbour model, which involves both listening and elicitation of thoughts, feelings and issues. A typical example of this is clarification or further discussion about feedback on assessed work, especially where the advisee doesn't understand the feedback or is disappointed with the assessed grade. A personal rule of thumb is always enable the advisee to speak first. Summarisation involves listening to the advisee, interpretation of the feedback, and then summarising and paraphrasing this into jargon-free language, which is repeated back to the advisee, thus communicating an understanding of their perspective. The next point on the model is handing over, and this centres around communication skills. Once an advisee has presented an issue, then it's important to reach a negotiated mutual decision on a potential action plan. Each party will have their own knowledge and beliefs, and it's important for the academic advisor to be able to understand and communicate how they might be further influenced by university or faculty rules and regulations. A recent example was when an advisee presented where English was a second language and wished to employ a personal proofreader for assignments and sought my opinion as her academic advisor. I established the university regula regulations on the use of proofreaders for assess work and communicated this to the advisee as I had not encountered this problem before. The decision to go ahead with this personal strategy was therefore handed over to the advisee with clarity about potential outcomes if the regulations were breached. Another similar example is communicating and handing over options for mitigating circumstances and where information and support may be found. The next point of the model is safety netting and this is about trying to predict outcomes. Once a decision has been handed over to an advisee, there may be situations where it's impossible to fully guarantee a predicted outcome. There may be positions of uncertainty for the advisor and it's always important to be aware of your own limitations as an academic advisor. You will note the university advice about when to refer academic advisees to other agencies and of course it is up to the advisee whether or not they wish to pursue a suggested referral. A recent example was an email from a distance learning student 
to me as an academic advisor who is aware of being behind with online work on a module including participation in online forums and group work which involved the use of the wiki. This was accompanied with the disclosure of having dyslexia. In this situation, I liaised with the module leader, who were both transparent with the advisee, that there was, this was a situation where a self-referral to dyslexia student support services for further advice would be beneficial to all parties. The advisee followed this course of action and the outcome was an action plan of reasonable adjustments which were easily understood by the, acad the advisee, academic advisor and module team. The final point, sorry, the final point of the model, checkpoint of the model, is housekeeping and it's very much about the academic advisor taking care of themselves. The academic advising role is not without stresses of its own, so it's important to consider opportunities and situations where you can debrief with colleagues and in some situations your line manager. For example, there may be conflicts of interest in your academic advisor role if you are also the subject coordinator or the dissertation supervisor for the student. It's therefore important to discuss and reflect on your decision making processes with colleagues and team members. It is of course important to maintain confidentiality between colleagues during these conversations. A reflection of what you've learned in a particular situation may pr prompt learning for others. For example, the scenario of the distance learning student with dyslexia prompted a much wider discussion at programme and faculty level about dyslexia issues and online distance learning. Personal reflection on your academic advising role can help you identify any future personal development needs which you may wish to discuss with your line manager or during your PDR.